Uh, good afternoon. Uh, members of the Standing Committee on Procedure House Affairs from uh, the opposition parties just returned from the committee room. Uh, the committee was suspended this morning uh, during its deliberations on uh, the motion to have the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, Katie Telford, testify on um, knowledge that she had and briefings that she received on foreign interference uh, efforts uh, in Canadian elections. This is uh, following, of course, yesterday the Prime Minister's announcement that in spite of uh, calls from all opposition parties to have a open, transparent public inquiry, um, his efforts to uh, further his cover-up and use a process of a secret committee with secret results where there would be no transparency for Canadians. So all opposition parties uh, attended the meeting uh, room this afternoon. The vice chair, uh, Mr. Nader, was prepared to gavel in for the meeting, but the uh, Liberal chair and Liberal members uh, did not attend the meeting room, and so quorum wasn't achieved, and they've continued their, uh, their cover-up that, uh, that is to follow their filibuster from this morning. We're going to continue to press for answers and uh, continue our calls for the Prime Minister's uh, Chief of Staff, Katie Telford, to appear at committee. Um, and I'll just turn the microphone over to uh, Rachel Blaney from the NDP. Well, thank you. Uh, it is true. Today, the Procedure and House Affairs held their committee. We suspended uh, right before question period with the intention of returning to continue this very important discussion. I just want to remind my Conservative friend that it wasn't just uh, for Katie Telford. It was really about approaching both uh, members from the Conservatives and the Liberals to talk about foreign interference in a broad spectrum. The reality is the NDP brought forward the motion in the committee to talk about having a in public inquiry. We know that there there needs to be transparency in this process. Quite honestly, it's gotten to a point where Canadians are really feeling concern about the electoral process, and we need to make sure that there is a report back to Canadians so that they can have faith in these institutions and that these institutions will continue to become stronger through this process. So it was unfortunate that the Liberals didn't show up for us to continue this very important discussion so that we can talk about collaboratively how we're going to come together. You know, the Prime Minister made an announcement yesterday, and I appreciate appreciate that that's a step, but it is still not a public inquiry. And what I'm hearing very clearly from people across this country is they want answers and they want to know what is happening to make sure we protect institutions for all from all forms of foreign interference. Uh, so hopefully we'll get this committee going soon, and it was disappointing not to see the Liberals there. Thank you, and I'll pass it on. Oui, bonjour, vice-présidente du comité de la procédure, Marie-Hélène Gaudreau. En fait, euh, ce qui vient de se passer, c'est une démonstration, en fait, que, que la tête est toujours dans le sable. C'est-à-dire, on essaie de sauver notre démocratie euh, avec tous les éléments nécessaires pour faire la lumière, puisque les gens sont inquiets, on veut avoir des réponses et nous sommes en mode solution. Donc, on peut constater en ce moment qu'il n'y a pas de partisanerie et euh, l'invitation à poursuivre les travaux, puisqu'une grande étape avait été franchie avec le sous-amendement. On a pu vérifier qu'il y avait les ressources nécessaires de la Chambre. Nous avions le temps et les ressources pour finaliser, mais l'obstruction, en fait, du gouvernement démontre encore une fois qu'ils ont plein de choses à cacher. Peut-être juste pour terminer un petit mot, euh, comme vous pouvez le constater, euh, les partis d'opposition, les trois partis d'opposition étaient euh, prêts à reprendre les travaux cet après-midi sur une motion euh, qui a été euh, appuyée euh, par les trois partis d'opposition pour faire en sorte qu'on puisse aller plus loin puis avoir plus de réponses de la part du gouvernement libéral. Malheureusement, euh, il y a clairement un ordre qui a été donné de la part du bureau du premier ministre pour qu'il euh, y ait de l'obstruction au comité des procédures de la Chambre. Euh, le fait que les libéraux ne se soient pas présentés cet après-midi après, -midi après à la reprise, alors qu'on s'attendait tous à être en mesure de reprendre les travaux du comité cet après-midi pour continuer à discuter de cette motion-là, démontre qu'il y a de l'obstruction systématique qui va être faite par les libéraux. Encore une fois, on lance un appel, c'est euh, dans le but de protéger notre système de démocratie, c'est dans le but de protéger euh, notre, euh, nos élections euh, de futures ingérences étrangères, mais surtout de faire la lumière sur ce que le premier ministre savait quand il l'a su, euh, pourquoi il n'a rien fait à ce moment-là et pourquoi il a attendu à la toute dernière minute avant d'annoncer des mesures qui, finalement, se conclut par un comité secret alors que tous les partis d'opposition réclament une enquête publique. Donc, on est extrêmement déçus euh, de la décision des libéraux de ne pas s'être montrés cet après-midi, mais on va continuer à mettre de la pression pour obtenir la comparution des témoins qu'on a demandé. Merci. What's your next step, then? 
Euh, le comité reprend euh, jeudi, donc on va continuer les discussions sur la motion jeudi, puis on va voir si les libéraux vont continuer euh, de faire de l'obstruction systématique pour empêcher Katie Telford et les autres témoins qui sont dans la motion qui a été présentée, dans les demandes présentées par la NPD, de se présenter en comité. En anglais, s'il vous plaît aussi. Oui, oui, Rachel. Well, I think our next step is we're going to continue to do this work. Obviously, the committee will be meeting again on Thursday, and I'm sure this will continue. What is upsetting about this is that we do have the ministers uh, coming. Uh, so this now will prevent that activity from happening because we have to continue this study or this uh, motion. So uh, it's frustrating that we're not having the ability to have this conversation. And I think what's really important to remember about this is that we're willing. We all showed up at the room. We were sitting in the space waiting for the chair to come. We did not receive any word, and it's disappointing to see what is suspended not to be able to continue. Did they give you an explanation? We have heard nothing at this point. Uh, I guess we'll be continuing to try to figure out what we're going to do. And I, I would say that in the next committee, what's unfortunate is we're going to continue to see this happen so that we're extending and extending uh, the time. So hopefully we can get the Liberals to get on page, especially with you know our proposal from the NDP around having a public inquiry. I think, again, it just goes to that point of transparency. What's been announced so far doesn't get us to that step. And until we get to that step, we'll have to continue to do this work in PROC instead of doing what should be done, which is to give it to an independent process that provides clarity for Canadians. This is a question for the Conservatives, and I want to quote your leader, Pierre Polyev, said today, the Prime Minister is working against the interests of his own country and his own people. The Prime Minister is acting against Canada's interests and in favour of a foreign dictatorship's interests. Do you agree with his words? What we've seen from uh, Mr. Trudeau is that uh, in spite of the fact that opposition parties uh, have called for a, a transparent public process, and we're waiting for that report to, to be tabled in the House by, by the PROC chair uh, tomorrow, um, calling on the government to, to have a public transparent inquiry, um, that he hasn't done that. And he, um, he, he's not uh, engaged in a transparent process. He's using a, you know, a, a special rapporteur, and he wants to um, use the NSI COP, um, which is not going to provide any transparency to Canadians. So Canadians aren't served by, by him doing that. What we also saw today was in spite of the fact that we had all of the resources, we had translators in the room, we had staff in the room, we had all opposition parties in the room who were looking to continue that, that bipartisan, that nonpartisan effort to get transparency for Canadians. There was um, you know, an announcement yesterday uh, from the Prime Minister and it didn't reflect the reality of what Canadians are looking for and, and that's transparency and that's what's in the interest of Canadians. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Your Conservative leader said today that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is not working in the interest of Canadians, but in fact in the interest of a foreign dictatorship. Would you agree with what he is saying? Look, Justin Trudeau has done nothing but cover up for everything that the Chinese dictatorship has done for him and his party. Uh, it, I think you can leave it quite easily to extrapolate that, that uh, he's benefited directly from the, the communist regime in Beijing, and I think that is very disturbing for all of us as Canadians. Il y a des gens de la Mégantic, des citoyens, des organisations qui vous auraient envoyé une lettre pour demander une étude environnementale euh, sur la, 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 la voie de contournement. Avez-vous reçu cette lettre? Oui, on l'a reçu ce matin et donc il y a une procédure à suivre. En fait, c'est l'agence d'évaluation environnementale qui doit déterminer s'il doit ou non y avoir, qui fait une recommandation au ministre, à savoir s'il doit ou non y avoir une évaluation environnementale. Donc, nous avons transmis cette lettre-là à l'agence d'évaluation environnementale qui, elle, va faire l'analyse. Croyez-vous personnellement que ce serait nécessaire ou souhaitable d'avoir une, une étude comme ça? J'ai beaucoup, beaucoup d'opinions personnelles, mais évidemment, en tant que ministre de l'Environnement, ce n'est pas mes opinions personnelles qui comptent, c'est évidemment le, le processus qu'on doit suivre. Alors, moi, ce que je dois faire par la loi, c'est attendre la recommandation de, de l'Agence d'évaluation environnementale, et c'est ce que je vais faire. Yeah. As you know, plastic companies are taking the federal government to court. What's at stake with this case? Well, what's at stake is the ability of, of Canadians to be able to enjoy the environment, our, our lakes, our, our, our rivers, our, our ocean, in as much as a pristine way as possible. And, and obviously, 
banning a certain number of harmful single-use plastic is not the solution to plastic pollution, but it is part of the solution to plastic pollution. So we're doing a number of things to reduce the amount of plastics that, that, that is littering our, our environment, our, our beaches, our, our lakes and, and rivers, as well as our oceans, which includes banning a certain number of harmful, harmful single-use plastics. We're working to ensure that more recycled plastic is used in the fabrication of, of plastic. We're working on, 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 on labeling. And, and we're also, Canada is also part of the High Ambition Coalition to Fight Plastic Pollution, which has launched negotiations so that we land in, in two years a new international agreement to eliminate plastic pollutions in the coming decade. So we're doing a number of things, and we won't be deterred by a few uh, international companies, multinationals, who are looking at, at, at their economic interest instead of looking at the greater interest of, of Canadians and the environment. Now, they're saying that they don't disagree with the science of Environment Canada, but they do say that it doesn't meet the bar for listing a substance as toxic. How do you respond to that? We, we believe, and, and, and the evidence shows, that those plastics have very harmful impacts on, on the environment, on, on, on marine and, and sea creatures, and, and therefore they can be labeled, labeled toxic. I understand that they might disagree with that, but, but that is the conclusion to which we came in and we're sticking to, to those conclusions. Is what at stake, you know, is part of what at stake is your ability to, to ban certain items? Do you think that that is, you know, may, maybe that won't be, that's not going to be argued in court, but do you think that is at stake here, that the government's ability to say that, hey, plastic bags are bad, do you think that's at stake? Well, clearly that's what the companies want. Uh, we, we disagree with that, and we're very confident that the court will will, will rule that what we're doing is, is sound from, from, from a regulatory perspective, from a legislative perspective as well as from an administrator's perspective. Okay. Thank you so much for stopping. Thank you, David. Really Thank you very much. Merci. Le Québec a, a décrété un moratoire sur les bouts euh, d'épuration biosolide. Euh, Ottawa n'a rien fait. Donc là, en ce moment, finalement, les bouts sont exportés du Maine vers le Nouveau-Brunswick. Euh, vous aviez dit en décembre que vous étiez préoccupé par la situation. Ça ne semble pas réglé. Qu'est-ce que vous allez faire? Alors, on travaille avec le ministère de l'Environnement et aussi l'Agence canadienne d'inspection des aliments pour voir de, à quel moment ou de quelle façon on pourrait euh, faire le suivi de nouvelles normes. Donc, c'est vraiment le ministère de l'Environnement qui est le premier à intervenir sur le sujet. Et je suis ça de près, effectivement, parce que d'autant plus que c'est l'Agence canadienne d'inspection des aliments, mais aussi, ça se passe beaucoup dans ma région. Donc, je suis particulièrement euh, intéressée à suivre le dossier. Là. Oui, je comprends, mais ça, c'est en décembre dernier. Là, on est rendu en mars et vous dites que vous suivez la situation. Donc, qu'est-ce qui a été fait précisément pour nous, nous prouver qu'on avance et qu'on est près d'une solution? Alors, il y a du travail qui se fait au niveau du ministère de l'Environnement. Je ne suis pas en mesure de vous donner les détails de ce côté-là. On attend de voir la première position du ministère de l'Environnement pour voir quel suivi devra être fait. Quand on parle de l'Agence canadienne d'inspection des aliments, c'est est-ce qu'il y a euh, une inquiétude au niveau de la santé? Est-ce qu'effectivement, ces boules-là utilisées dans, sur des terres agricoles pourraient poser un, un éventuel risque pour la santé? Je crois que de façon générale, non. Est-ce que des cas particuliers, lorsque... Euh, on touche un secteur plus industriel là, avec ces bouts. Est-ce que ça pourrait poser des risques? Là, ça devient plus spécifique et euh, j'ai besoin d'avoir l'avis des spécialistes et des scientifiques euh, là-dessus. Avez-vous un échéancier? Savez-vous dans combien de temps tout ça pourrait avoir? On pourrait avoir, franchir une nouvelle étape pour savoir s'il y a effectivement des risques? Euh, non, je n'ai pas un échéancier précis à ce moment-ci. Merci. Merci.